everybody. This is Cody James, the Barker from the NWA, also the leader of Cody Country. You are watching Call TV. Follow these guys on all their socials. Click, like, subscribe, share, and give these guys the respect that they give to you in content. Salutations, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pro Wrestling 60. I'm XLJ, the OG, joined by my partner, Kyle, my brother from another mother this week, hailing from the pond across overseas, since we're going to London, Mr. b Roll. Jolly good day, y'all. Cheerio, fish and chips, you know, all all the all the good canopics and, uh, okay, okay I'm going to stop right now. Um, I, think, I think you're ready for all in. Yeah, I'm ready for I'm ready for all in or some or something like that. Oh um, you believe it's all in week? How crazy is that? We are here. It is the final countdown, no pun intended, to all in. And man, oh man, it's going to be an awesome weekend of pro wrestling, and we're going to talk about it. But that being said, Mister B Roll, last week is, was an amazing week of wrestling too. That is right. We have an amazing weekend, a week, week and weekend of wrestling ahead. And last mm -hmm. week was awesome. And speaking of countdowns, I say the clock starts right now. Let's get right into it. Our top story this week, G1 Climax 34 has concluded. And we here at PW60 has finally figured out how the hell this all transpired. Actually, not as complicated as we thought it was going to be. B. So essentially how it came down to is you had your leaders in A and B block, and then there was a play-in matchup with the other top two competitors in each respective block. So we had a play-in round followed by the semifinals and finals. So let's talk about that play-in round. Um, so surprisingly, in the A block, we had not surprising Shingo Takagi, but Great Ohan made it into the um, final uh, six competitors. Now, Shingo Takagi would go on to defeat Great Ohan to go to the semifinals. And in that other matchup, we had Yoto Suji against Takeshka. Uh, from AEW and DDT Pro, and man, he had an incredible outing in this G1 Climax. But Yoto Sushi would pick up the win to advance to the semifinals. Now, from there, in the semifinals matchups, in the A block, we had Sack Sabre Jr. defeat Shingo Takagi to advance to the finals, and then Yoto Suji defeated David Finley in the B block to win the respective B block, thus setting up the final matchup of the G1 between Sack Sabre Jr. and one Yoto Suji. And we have a winner. And not surprising to us, finally, he gets his just due. Sack Sabre Jr. has won the G1 Climax. And in doing so, Mr. B-Roll, he has made history as he is now the second Gaijin in New Japan Pro Wrestling history to ever win the G1. What do you think of this historic win for Zack Saber Jr.? Um, I I've always liked Zack Saber uh, Jr. Um, I, I I guess in some ways you could say long overdue, and in, in some ways I mean he I mean he was a guy, and I just kind of want to say because I think when they announced the blocks, I maybe said like you know he may come out of his block, so. Uh, credit where credit's due, but I mean, who, hey, shout who, out to our knows? good friend uh, yeah. CDC. He called it. He said Zack Saber Jr. is going to win this thing. Yeah, but he's also he Zack Saber Jr. Mark. So yeah, um, but if you think but, about it, though, yeah. he is long overdue. I mean, he is he has notoriously been one of the best tournament wrestlers in the world today, and for him to win arguably the biggest tournament of them all in the G1 Climax, it's very fitting for one Zack Saber Jr. And there was some incredible uh, showings throughout the G1, as there always is. Uh, Yoda yeah. Sushi, man, going to that final 
uh, and thinking, thinking he could have made history because he won the New Japan Cup earlier this year. He would have been the first wrestler ever to win the New Japan Cup and the G1. But, you know, his career is just getting started. I'm sure he's going to have plenty more G1 finals as well as a G1 Climax under his belt. But the Sack Sabre Jr. has won the G1 Climax. And, of course, you know, he's our wrestler of the week this week here on PW60. But here's uh, the part that confuses. Yes, let's talk about it. So, Sack Saber Jr. Uh, during his like after you know during the celebration and whatnot, as tradition in New Japan, uh, when the wrestlers are talking to the crowd, he more or less decided, you know what, I'm not gonna wait to Wrestle Kingdom to challenge for Naito's IWGP Championship, as he has laid down on the challenge essentially. Uh, to meet him here in the next month or something like that. I think it's the next big New Japan show. Now, here's my working theory about this B-roll. I believe Zack Sabre Jr. will, in fact, go on to become the IWGP champion. And I think what the reason they're wanting him to get the strap on him now is because going into Royal Quest over in England, they're going to want him representing New Japan as the IWGP champion. Yes, yes, yes. As as someone here is who is across the pond here, I can confirm that the English would go bananas over are that. Are you are you Scottish now? I'm so confused. <laughs> well, reasons. Well, nonetheless, it was a fun G1 climax. It was a different. We talked about this too. It was kind of a different. It was a different feel to it. A different vibe this year because, as we've talked about before with New Japan Pro Wrestling, they are in this rebuilding process. So. Uh, give them time. Let them cook. Uh, there's some stars in the making there. I'm excited to see what the Three Musketeers. I'm a little disappointed Shoto Yumina wasn't even in the talks for the final, but uh, Shooter's still my guy, and I know one day he will be the IWGP champion. That's but. right. It's like, it's like that's our guy. Like, out of the Three Musketeers, I know you and me, it's like, Shooter is our favorite. And it's oh, like, yeah. why don't they see what we see? I know. They will someday, though. So, you know... Well, it, you, you know, Japan, they love their slow builds, but yeah, uh, yeah. But like I say, and think of how long Sack Saber Jr. has been relevant and a great uh, competitor over there, and now just winning a, winning a G1 climax. So, yep, yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. But man, it's exciting. Congratulations to Sack Saber Jr. I'm excited to see where we go from here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, man, we got to talk about WWE, though. And let's talk about this past week on Friday Night SmackDown, as once again, the OTC. Roman Reigns returned to pretty much take over his right to be the head of the table. And pretty much he had everything in hand. He had the, uh, and I'm sorry, I forget the terminology the for the necklace. The, uh, is it Kahula? Kahula? Or Kahula? I don't know. I butchered that. I apologize. I should know because I'm American Samoan, remember? But anyways, um, Oh, I like how you put your glasses on. Are you going to edit? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, well, oh, I don't, I don't, I do not. I do not know the proper way to pronounce it, but I, I'm going to say this. I had heard reports that it was going to be weeks, maybe months, before Jacob Fatu and Roman Reigns ever did contact with each other. What yeah. the heck is this? <laughs> How'd that work out for you? So, yes, Jacob Fatu shows up and pretty much just dominates. Like, holy shit, this was a moment. And the fact that, here's the crazy thing to me. He did this all in a walking boot. He took out Roman freaking Reigns, the man who has been dominant in the WWE for the past several years. And he came in and single-handedly took over. Like, has there ever been an enforcer in a faction who has dominated and has whipped as much ass as Jacob Fatu? I know it's in a short period of time, but my God. Did they do everything right about with the Jacob Fatu booking so far? Like, this is just next level. Like, holy shit. Like, um, they made Jacob I, I, Fatu. Now, hold on, you fucking Mark. I'm not done yet. <laughs> now, they made Jacob Fatu a star. I'm sorry. Go on. Um, I would like to say that, um, no, uh, Fax would agree that he has definitely been the most dominant force um, in a faction. Okay. God, I can't say that with look at you with the straight face. I love you, buddy. Um, so there you have it. Yeah, Jacob Fatu. Like, and it looks like uh, Roman's probably going to be uh, gone for a little while now to kind of sell this. Um, but yeah, I, I think 
it's going to happen. I think they could pot. So what I'm hearing in rumors, and this is take it with a grain of salt. It sounds like they are potentially going to lead to, we've, we've talked about this, the Bloodline Civil War Survivor Series. Um, potentially there may be a matchup at Bad Blood between uh, Jacob Fatu and Roman Reigns. We shall see. Uh, but I know Roman is off TV for the next several weeks. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I uh, have, have loved everything they've done with Jacob Fatu so far. And, and thir- Friday night, they freaking killed it, man. This was a great segment. Absolutely love and adored it well my friend i, I just want to oh. i want to say one more thing before we go okay. to dad hat okay for some advice all right oh where you knew going? that's we get where some we're advice. going see i know i know i just want to say one more thing he was in a fucking walking boot <laughs> yeah really he was he, right, <laughs> he whipped his ass in a fucking walking boot are you kidding me like holy shit and people you can put your little glasses on for this one. Like, oh, well, you know, he's got, he, he made Solo and, and Tama look bad, whatever. Just, just fucking sit back and watch this, okay? It's good. It's is good shit. Like, this is fucking awesome. Like, it, it, you know what? If you look at Roman's reign, what did he have done? He had Solo wreck shop and fuck people up. So, but Jacob's just doing it in a more menacing way. But still, this was awesome. I don't care what anybody says. But as you alluded to, my friend, it's that time of the show. Let's go to Dad Hat with Dad Hat's Tip of the Week. It's that time of the week again. Dad Hat's Life Lessons of the Week. Brought to you by World Championship Wreckage. Find them on YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. And also by the Russell Talk Wolfpack. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. every Wednesday. Twitch.tv slash Russell Talk Wolfpack. And now, here's Dad Hat. All right, kids, always remember, patience is key. It's not all about you. It's about taking turns. It's about letting the person in front of you have their turn before you take yours. You don't just get to skip in front of the line. You don't get to say, you know, who cares about the other people who've been waiting? Patience is key. That's great, that's great. Wait a second. Me chin from behind with a kendo stick. I was enjoying that. And me, Chin, looking to get the last laugh. <laughs> oh, Dad Hat is so wise. But let's talk about the rest of SmackDown. And as you saw there, me, Shin breaking up the party of one Queen Nia Jax. It was like her little coronation. That was kind of weird, too, wasn't it? I felt like it was de- I, definitely more of a Tiffy's party because with the unicorns and the pink and stuff. And Nia even said it's kind of not her bag. But, you know, whatever. Uh, pretty deadly, deadly singing. Uh, a musical number is always great television, in my opinion. So, yes, boy. I was all about Yes, that. boys. <laughs> Pretty deadly. The musical. Yes. But uh, the rest of SmackDown was a solid show. Um, you had Carmelo Anthony finally pick up a win against Andrade and that. Oh, my rivalry. gosh. You just said Carmelo Anthony. Hold I on. I did say Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Hayes. Shit. <sighs> Uh, now, see here, sir. It's Carmelo uh, uh, Hayes, uh, and he don't miss. Yes, there, there. Thank you, Mark. I think you just created a new character tonight. God help us. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, we got to see the continuation between the Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens story as Cody came to save the day for KO as uh, A-Town Down Under was about to attack him with some chairs. Uh, Blair Davenport going up against Naomi, uh, continuing on that little story there uh, with the Unholy Union going up against them and uh, Jade and uh, Bianca. Um, like I say, SmackDown was a solid show. Um, but let's talk about Monday Night Raw and <laughs> the meme heard around the world. I love the freaking um, the Damian Priest, like the that that right there. That's 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 gold right there. That's comedic gold. Um, the I love that opening segment, uh, Rhea with that promo, and it was interesting, kind of the back and forth between those two, because whether you love them or hate them, Dominic kind of made some good points, man. And there you go, Mellow missed at times, Anthony not Hayes. <laughs> um, but also we got to see the Viper come out of from nowhere, hit uh, Gunther with that RKO. What about the little swerve from CM Punk against Drew? there kind of get throwing him off guard um 
We also got to finally see kind of that turn from Ivy Nile as she uh, pretty much joined up with um, the Creed brothers uh, in their war against American Alpha. And that two out of three falls match for the IC title with Braun Breaker and Sami Zayn and Braun uh, winning two straight falls after losing the first fall. Will you make a Monday Night Raw, my friend? Um, Solid, 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 solid. Yeah show i said I like raw has show. been hitting it out of the park here lately i've honestly i love both shows but i feel like i've kind of been enjoying raw a little bit better here lately yeah i i would i would agree with those sentiments um uh, as well see i mean like my my thing with my thing with raw used to be it's like oh man it's three hours but like right now it's like three pretty gosh darn entertaining yeah. hours yeah it really is man yeah, it's a really it's really solid and as we're going into Bash at Berlin, we got some solid matchups ahead. So this is officially our card as of right now for Bash at Berlin. As you can see here, we have got three announced matches so far, and these are all main event caliber matches. As we have got, of course, Randy Orton challenging Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. Kevin Owens will challenge Cody Rhodes for that undisputed WWE championship. And how about it? That big mixed tag match with Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan going up against Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. It's looking pretty good. And tonight on Raw, I think we're going to get some additions to that card. So, already, Bash to Berlin shaping up to be a solid show, and that'll be coming up to you sooner before you know it. Uh, I think it's a week from this Saturday, actually, believe it or not. So Crazy. It is crazy. Well, let's Wrestle, talk about wrestling never stops. Ever. It never does. And speaking of which, let's talk about NXT from this past Tuesday night. And we have got some new NXT tag team champions as Chase U won the tag team titles as they defeated Axiom and Nathan Frazier. A tremendous matchup. So happy for Chase U. I freaking love Chase U, man. Uh, and kind of maybe a little bit of a redemption story here, maybe for Ridge Holland. You know, maybe, maybe. so, uh, but I, I love this. I love everything about them. Uh, honestly, I think Chase U is probably my guilty pleasure. My favorite, one of my favorite things from NXT. Um, uh, so happy for them, man. Uh, we just need to get that women's championship on the Ohio. I'm just saying, but we also did have another championship change hand as the North American Heritage Cup, um, did come back to one Charlie Dempsey as he defeated Tony D'Angelo. Um, I mean, I was kind of, I like Tony D'Angelo. Honestly, I never, like for me with Tony, I, I never was like a huge fan of his until um, I got to go to the um, NXT um, show in Philly. And he really impressed me against Dragunov and I've enjoyed watching him since then. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the Heritage Cup, when I think of it, I, I, I think of Charlie Dempsey. I mean, this makes perfect sense. I'm surprised it took this long to get it back in all honesty. But congratulations to him as he is, once again, the Heritage Cup champion. Let's talk about the rest of NXT uh, from this past week. How about the start of the show with that Ethan Page promo and then say his name, and even though he didn't get his name today, but still Joe Hendry appeared and looked like he was going to become the challenger and thus Wesley continues his week of being the biggest dick on NXT as he attacked Joe Hendry. Uh, and it does look like we are set up for a matchup to determine the number one contender. Um, what's the next big NXT show? I forget. It's um, is it is No it Mercy. It? No Mercy. Isn't it? Yeah. So um, that matchup, I think that's coming up this week on NXT, but it's like Joe Hendry, Wesley, and... Um, uh, there was somebody else in the match, I think. Um, sorry, there's so much wrestling, it's hard to keep track of it. Uh, but nonetheless, be on the lookout for that. Um, also, we had uh, Eddie Thorpe and Lexus King continue their kind of weird rivalry. Uh, I want to talk about this, though. How about the North American Championship with Obafemi against uh, Otis? <laughs> that was a fucking awesome matchup. Love that matchup. But we say it here all the time on PW60, man. Uh, NXT is killing it every Tuesday. And I, I can't wait to see the debut that's going to be coming up on uh, the CW. I'm from Chicago. Oh, yeah. And yes, get ready for Julia. 
Screaming her chain. I can't wait. I can't wait to see Julia. And and Stephanie Vicker. Kerr, man. Let's go. Roxanne. I mean, she's been a great champion, but I'm sorry. I think your days are numbered. Uh, but the we'll have to see what happens there. But I can say overall solid NXT, solid week for the WWE. But you know what, B-roll? It was also a pretty solid week this week for AEW. Especially as we are on the road. We are knocking on that door for all in and let's start off talking about dynamite kicked off with a hell of an opener with uh, mercedes monet going up against hikaru shida for that tbs championship my only question is like and i love camille and but like how dumb were you guys like that looked nothing like Britt baker <laughs> like i mean come on like and then of course Britt shows up attacking uh, mercedes getting her hands on her um also, we got that interesting kind of weird rivalry that's going on between Hangman and like Jeff Jarrett's crew as uh, Hangman went up against Jay Lethal. Uh, of course, Hangman picking up the win there. Um, we also got to see uh, that three-way matchup to determine the number one entrant in the gauntlet match at All In with Orange Cassidy, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, of course, Orange Cassidy picking up the win. Uh, got that stare down with Okada and Claudio, which that matchup will be coming to you this week on Dynamite as well. Uh, Young Bucks and Acclaimed ended in a schmoz, but I want to talk about that main event. Swerve Strickland against uh, Wheeler Yuta. And at the end of it, man, like, Swerve, just being Swerve, man, he went full-blown heel. It's crazy to me because it's like, he is doing such great heel work, but everybody still loves him, and I, I mean, I get it. But I, I I don't know, bro. After this past week on Dynamite, I just maybe it's because I'm just not ready to come to the terms that uh, Brian Danielson could be done. You know, I, I think that's a big part of it. But man, I, I'm telling you, I I'm enjoying the Swerve's title run. But I got to be honest, come Wembley, I'm kind of wanting to see the American Dragon go out on top and get one last run before he hangs that up for good. What do you think of Dynamite? You know, this week was like the first Dynamite in a minute where I was like rejuvenated a little bit. This was mm -hmm. a really solid show. Yeah, uh, it was. Like, was it all home runs and knocked out of the park? No. No. But no. there really, there wasn't any swings and misses. Yeah, there really wasn't. I agree. I, I agree with that. Yeah, there really wasn't. Um, solid show as we're going into All In. Uh, let's talk about Rampage from Friday night. Now, you could argue kind of a different <laughs> story here. I mean, I, I don't know. Just Rampage to me these past couple weeks, I felt good about it. And like it just seems like, I don't know. I'm just not into it, man. I just, uh, it's okay. It's not bad by any means. But I just feel like if I miss it, I'm okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not a big it's not a big deal, but you did get the conglomeration go up against the butcher and the outrunners, which hey, anytime you get the outrunners on TV, I'm all for it. Uh Nick Wayne going up against Kip Saban, kind of continuing that little storyline they got going there. And the main event was your boys top flight going over on MXM. But I will say this, talking about AEW television, what has improved, I think, drastically over the past couple of weeks has been collision. This collision agree. was fucking great Saturday night. Now, Love okay, let's well, see. You know what we can attribute this to? What's that? Maybe I should. Maybe I should put these on for this. Okay. Oh God, here we go. Tony Khan clearly watches our show. Yeah, you think he's he's listening? I, I he's think listening. so because he knows. We complained about Collision for weeks. And look at it now. It's a great show. It was an awesome show, man. Uh, you had. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You have Britt Baker kicking it off against Harley Cameron. Um, you also got to see uh, Claudio Casanoli go up against Leo Rush. Hologram in action. I love what they're doing with Hologram and having them kind of exclusively to Collision. You got new Ring of Honor tag team champions, Sammy Guevara and Dustin Rhodes. I love Dustin Rhodes. You know my thoughts on Sammy Guevara. I'm just kind of like, eh. You know, it is what it is, I guess. But At this still, point, I'm like, can we just retire the Ring of Honor tag team titles because <laughs> this, sh this shit's getting oh. ridiculous? Oh, that's dope, Lightskin. Darius coming through. That's cool. That's cool. 
Uh, but let's talk about that main event. <laughs> you have to sell us Jericho jackets. Um, the acclaimed going up against FTR. And honestly, if it wasn't for another amazing match this week on the television, which we're going to talk about here momentarily, it would have been our match of the week here on PW60 because that was a great tag team match. Of course, as we know, it went 30 minutes. Uh, but now we know that at All In, it is going to be a triple threat match for the AEW Tag Team Championship. And speaking of all in, let's run down this amazing card that we have on store for us this upcoming Sunday. Uh, of course, we like I say, we now know that's going to be a triple threat tag team. Also, we know what's going on with trios now. A what are we calling it? A London Falls ladder match. As oh, how, the bridge is falling yeah, down. <laughs> Uh, as we've got House of Black along with the Bang Bang Gang and, of course, the Patriarchy and a fourth team to be determined this week upcoming on Collision. We also now know the matchup between Darby Allen and Jack Perry will be a coffin match for the TNT Championship. Of course, Orange Cassidy will enter number one in that Casino Gauntlet match. Uh, and some of the big, big matchups, we got Tony Storm, of course, and Mariah May. In my opinion, that's the match of the show. That's what I want to see. That's what's getting my money. Uh, Mercedes Monet and Dr. Britt Baker for the TBS Championship. That big uh, matchup, that rematch between Will Ospreay and MJF, of course. And on uh, Zero Hour, big tag match uh, with Willow Nightingale and Tomohiro Ishii going up against Stokely and Chris Statlander. And, of course, we talked about it. This is it. It's the final countdown as it's being dubbed. Career versus title, AEW Championship on the line. Swerve Strickland. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson. It's all coming to you this Sunday at Wembley, and I'm sure they're going to have some more surprises up their sleeves. But holy shit, All In is looking fucking solid, is it not, my friend? It, it's looking sexy. I know. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> you looking sexy. Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, all right. But real quick, since we know Tony Khan listens, and I know oh, yeah. we need to keep moving because we have a lot yeah. to talk about. We but do. Tony Khan, I'm getting real close to the camera here. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is going to be he intimate. Is. Listen mm. to me. Listen mm. to me good. Mm -hmm. If I don't get freaking Grado at freaking all in. Preach, coming brother. To, coming out to Madonna. Reggie's I'm, even going out. I'm gonna do something crazy. Yep, you're, and you're gonna make Reggie mad too. So I agree, my friend, but uh, like I say, All In's going to be an amazing show, and it is coming to you this Sunday. Well, it's that time of the show. Let's We need to spice things up a bit. So let's go to good friend Spicy Guac for a spicy day. Spicy Guac, letting you know that Hangman Adam Page has a career-defining heel run as we speak right now. He wasn't doing it as a face. I got something in my eye. But as a heel, yes, he's spicy. He's getting the chili pepper. He's getting all of the chili peppers. I got to tell you, um, that's an interesting, that is a hot take, I think. Uh, you know, we're big Hangman fans, so it's interesting to hear. Huge shout out to Spicy, too, brother. We know you're not feeling well in the hospital. We wish you well, brother. We're thinking of you, and we love you, my friend. But, um, yeah, and I will mark out and sing Madonna. 100%, bro, 100%, dude. If we can buy all these other songs, you can do Grado and Madonna's Like a Prayer. I'm just going to take you there. <laughs> well, let's talk about this huge news announced this week for AEW. Uh, next year's All In is not going to go to London, but it will, in fact, come to Texas. That's right. As All In Texas will take place next July. Uh, B-Roll, I think we may have to get our asses to the Lone Star State to check this out. See, and I said, oh, there you're, you're back again. Um, oh, then he's gone again. But I am really excited to see this. It's cool that they're going to bring it over here. But I do think they're going to go back to London uh, the year after, I believe, is the plan. So. But pretty cool they're bringing it to Texas. What oh, great. We come back and we got to talk about this shit. So I want to keep it one. Like I was saying before we went off the air, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Um, triple A, Triple Mania. Looked like it was a fun show. Cool. Some new champions. Um, you got uh, Raj Desi and Satnam Singh winning the tag titles. You got uh, Matt Riddle winning the middleweight title or whatever it was. Vampiro's retirement tour. La Parker came out. Cool. I'm gonna keep it. This is this isn't even this is Jeremy coming to you. I cannot honestly support a company that has a known fucking like psychopath 
who has a track record of beating women and other things is your world champion. So, AAA, I'm disappointed in you personally. I'm not going to watch your fucking product. We'll report on it here because it's, um, uh, you know, it's PWC because it's wrestling. I mean, it was a big thing. But seriously, well, fuck you for having that piece of shit win your world title. And that's all I got to say about that. Just, just do better. Like, seriously. That guy, well, that guy shouldn't even be allowed to fucking wrestle, as far as I'm concerned. That guy should be in jail. I, I said what I said, and we're moving on to bigger and better things. Now let's talk about Impact from this past week on Thursday. And damn, this was a great fucking show. Um, you got that uh, three-way match with Riley Osborne, Chris Bay, and John Schuyler as we continue on qualifying for the Ultimate X match uh, at Emergence. Shell Shaw was in action against Tasha Steeles. Moose going up against one Mike Santana. Uh, but let's talk about the big one, that matchup between Josh Alexander and Nick Nemeth for the TNA Championship. Holy shit, was that a great match. Uh, as it went 30 minutes. Uh, and of course, no big shocker here. It was a competitive week, but that had to be our match of the week here on PW6. So do yourself a favor. Go back and watch this uh, matchup because it's so good. So freaking good, man. Uh, and I am so excited because we have got on the horizon an amazing card at TNA Emergence. But you know why I'm most excited about it, Mr. B-Roll? Why are you so excited? Because I'm going to be there front and center, front row, baby, for TNA Emergence. And I'm going to be there to get to witness this one-hour Iron Man match between Josh Alexander and Nick Nemeth. We're going to have that ultimate X matchup that already has. Um, we've we've got uh, four competitors so far with a couple more to qualify. And how about this? Jordan Grace teaming up with Spitfire to go up against Ash by Elegance and Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. It's going to be a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid uh, show so far. But that Iron Man match, dude, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I've never seen an Iron Man match in person before, believe it or not. Seen a lot of great or, wrestling, but or an Ultimate X match, right? That's that's true. I'm I'm marking two off my list, man. So, but so excited, cannot wait to see this. And we talked about it was an amazing weekend in the pro wrestling and pro wrestling. Uh, we got to see over in L.A. Uh, the I believe it's the Kitsulon, and I'm sorry, I know I butchered that um, show, but it just so happened to be. Not one, but two of our besties from our own PW60 family was there. So let's go to this little report from Sienna and the Best Scout Machine. You know, when it comes to going to an amazing independent wrestling show, you never know who you're going to be seeing. Like for the first time of the stars or even a surprise appearance of a very, very well-known independent wrestler or even a well-known wrestler that used to start out in pro wrestling. And that's the beauty about independent wrestling too because like no matter the different type of environment you're going to and especially like whether it's like just locally or just big as well, independent wrestling is such a very beautiful thing ever. You want to add that, my guy? I love independent wrestling so much, I want to take independent wrestling behind the Dunkin' Donuts to get it pregnant. Let's see. Yeah, like tonight. We were at Kitsune tonight, and like, the great Muda's daughter came out. We didn't even know she was going to be here. Highlight of my life. I got to see and be next to the devil's daughter herself. That's right. The great Sayuka made a surprise appearance. That's an example of a very surprising moment in independent wrestling, because you never know what to expect. In life and it's plus you know cards always subject to change but remember y'all i highly encourage you to go to any local independent wrestling show or it's like 30 minutes to an hour or far away from your area because you never know that one of these like up and coming wrestlers are gonna make it big just in the first when they're young yes support independent wrestling shania twain shania twain Shania Twain, indeed. Well, thank you so much, Best Scout and Sienna. Uh, I heart 3,000 this video, if I do say so myself. It's great, to, great that they got to go to that show and see the great Muda's daughter make her first ever appearance in North America. That's pretty cool, man. Pretty oh. dope, indeed. Well, 
let's continue talking about uh let's go back and talk about some japanese wrestling because as we know it is tournament season over in japan and even though the g1 concluded don't worry we got plenty more tournaments going on right now including noah's in one victory uh, let's go ahead and give you a little breakdown of the current rankings now in the a block we currently have a uh tie uh as we have got jack morris Luis Manta and Kaito Kiyomiya and Josh Briggs all at eight points. Then we've got Rio Hawaii Dragon at seven points, Dragon Bane at six, Masa Kitamiya at five, and Atushi Kotija has withdrawn from the competition because uh, he's mathematically eliminated anyway. So there you have that is the A block. Now let's take a look at the B block. And over in B-block action, we've got your leader is 10 points is Manobu Soya, following by Keno at 9 points, Titus Alexander and Tavion Heights all with 8 points, Yoshika Inamura with 6 points, Ayuko Sasaki with 4, Alpha Wolf with 3, and El Hio Dale Dr. Wagner Jr. is at 2 points, therefore he is mathematically eliminated from the tournament. Well, that is your update on that tournament and as we all know the five star grand p pre is going on keno is a god i agree best scout i knew you would like this buddy love you um as we know the five star grand prix is going on right now in japan of course we got to go to our resident expert the light skin gaijin with an update on the five star grand prix let's check this out who's ready for an update during Sunday's Red Stars event, Micah proved her dominance once again as she eliminated Ruaka from playoff contention, and Yuna Mizumori was eliminated after a defeat by Hazuki. Momo Watanabe finally got on the board after defeating Tam Nakano, and Azumi dethroned the stardom icon in the main event on Sunday. So a quick look at the standings here so far in Red Stars A. As you can see, Micah controls the Red Stars block with 8 points. However, Hazuki and Natsupoi are hot on her tail right now. And don't sleep on Minami because she's got five points as well. And in Red Stars B, as you can see, Azumi has taken control with eight points. However, do not sleep on the stardom icon. She has six points along with Meisero, who just eliminated Saya Ida from playoff contention. Tomorrow, Blue Stars takes center stage as last year's winner, Suzu Suzuki, goes one-on-one -on -one with Tekla. Miyu Amasaki goes one-on-one -on -one with Anna Jay, Shuri goes one-on-one -on -one with Koguma, and Saki Kashima will take on the Phoenix Queen, Saya Kamitani. Saya, just a little advice here. I understand that you're probably taking Saki Kashima lightly, but don't sleep on Saki Kashima. Anyone can get caught in the Kishikaisei. The Five Star Grand Prix keeps rolling, and we're getting close to the finals. Yes, we are, and we want to thank you so much, Light Skin, uh, for that report. He is our resident expert when it comes to stardom pro wrestling. And that's the great thing is well, about this show is we have so many different experts and so many different uh, promotions and, and styles of pro wrestling, and, and we are so excited tonight. Because I think this is like our, our birthday present to ourselves because something we've been wanting to do on this show for a long time is dedicate uh, some time to one of our favorite companies, and that is Game Changer Wrestling GCW. And it just so happens to be we have a new family member here as part of the Pro Wrestling 60 family. We are so honored and happy to have her on board with us. You know her and you love her. And if you don't yet know her, you're about to fall in love with her. That is one cake face Carly, who will be doing our GCW reports. And man, she had a big one for this week because this arguably was one of the biggest weeks in GCW. So let's go to cake face Carly with our GCW report. What's going on, PW60 fam? I'm Cake Face Carly, your new GCW bestie, and I'm here to talk about all things Game Changer Wrestling. Let's highlight some of the amazing things that happened this past week, as well as upcoming things you need to watch out for. GCW had five events this week, unlike the usual two or three, 
and three of five of those events took place in Japan. The first event took place one week ago today as GCW had a crossover event with DDT called Never Ending Noisy Summer. Although the show was a little more fun and lighthearted, it was still amazing with seven matches on card. A lot of tag team action took place, but one was Rina Yamashita teaming up with Jimmy Lloyd, which may seem hard to believe, but they teamed together very well as they took on Cannon and Daisuke Sasaki. The odds were stacked against Rina and Jimmy as there was outside interference from Cannon and Daisuke's team, but they put on a really good show. In the end, Daisuke and Cannon were victorious. Next, I gotta talk about one of my favorite matches of the night as Gringo Loco and One Called Manders took on Tatsuya Endo and Yuki Ino. This was easily a five-star match that definitely did not disappoint. With the mix of high-flying action, hard-hitting maneuvers, and great teamwork, this match was nothing short of impressive. And despite Gringo and Manders' effort, Tatsuya and Yuki picked up the win. Last but not least, we had Mao putting his DDT Universal Championship on the line against a returning Alex Zane. The last match Alex had was actually against Microman and he lost. So this was a great opportunity to showcase his talent as well as get a title opportunity. Overall, the match was incredible with such a display of raw talent. I loved this match. Sadly, the match did have to be stopped because Alex Zane did get injured after doing a flip onto the crowd and fucked up his knee. <laughs> Although the match ended on a sad note, there was so much respect given from Mao to Alex Zane and he even said, we can run it back once you're not injured. This did, however, put a damper on the rest of the Japan tour as Alex Zane was no longer to compete. Laughter and tears, sunglasses, toy blocks, and Effie and Dino having more ass in their match than a donkey stable, this event was definitely iconic. The next show was The Sky is the Limit, and I'll have to admit, out of all three Japan shows, this one was definitely my favorite. From Jimmy Lloyd getting knocked out, curses being blocked, legends and lariats from hell, this eight match fight card was second to none. First, let's talk about the bad boy Joey Janela going against the up and coming star, Marcus Mathers. This was another five star evenly stacked match that has truly made me into a Marcus Mathers fan. It was a back and forth bout, but there was nothing stopping the bad boy from picking up the win. There was a tag team match where Masha Slamovich teamed up with Rina Yamashita and took on Gringo Loco and Violento Jack, who took the place of Alex Zane. With so many different wrestling styles colliding in the ring, this was incredibly fluid. Both teams put on a hell of a match, but nothing was stopping the girlies from being victorious. Then in the main event was former stable mates from Second Gear Crew, Mance Warner taking on One Called Manders, putting his GCW World Championship on the line. This was already Mance Warner's second title defense of the week as he was successful in defending it against Shunma Katsumata and the bad boy Joey Janela. The match was nothing short of intense and full of chemistry. You could see the history between these two bleed out figuratively and literally. And although Manders had that championship at his fingertips, Nothing was stopping Mance Warner. The last event in Japan was You Only Die Once. And not only was this the shortest match card of the tour, but of the entire week, as this only had six matches. With three titles defended and retained, a lot of blood, unexpected dream matches like Tetsuya Endo and Gringo Loco, as well as a huge fucking panda. Let's talk about it. The Russian Dynamite, Masha Slamovich, ended up putting her JCW World Championship on the line against Marcus Mathers. The match was beautifully done with a great display from both opponents, but in the end, Masha kept her belt. One call of Manners scored another title opportunity as Rina Yamashita put her JCW Ultra Violent Championship on the line. Although the match was insanely brutal, the respect and sportsmanship was clearly evident and Rina Yamashita ended up winning. I could talk about Mance Warner's third title defense in Japan, but honestly, there's a match I want to talk about a little more. A scramble match between Dan Housen, Jimmy Lloyd, Joey Janela, Kikitaro, Effie, and none other than Andriza Giant Panda. No bullshit, guys. There was a giant panda. <laughs> 
although everybody put up such a valiant effort, including Dan Housen putting on a curse and everyone started doing the thriller dance, no one was a match for Andreza and the cutest competitor ever won. All three shows in Japan were awesome and I can't wait to see him go back. But GCW had shows at the end of the week also back in the States, so let's talk about it. The first show back in the States was No Signal in the Hills Part 4 as they went back to LA at the UCC Center. This card had 10 matches making it the most of the entire week and it was awesome. Sydney Akeem had a match with Rich Strong which was another 5 star match. Start to finish, it was absolutely entertaining, but Sidney Akeem kept his winning streak alive in GCW. A six-man Lucha Libre tag match happened where Los Macizos teamed up with none other than Chavo Guerrero Jr. as they took on Gringo Loco, Erez, and Jack Cartwright. An amazing match with a course tribute to Eddie Guerrero where Chavo did the three amigos on all three of his opponents as well as a frog splash. Although Los Macizos and Chavo won, Let's face it, we all won for witnessing this match. Megan Bain finally got to get her hands on Blake Christian after all the shit he's put her through just because she's aligned herself with the bad boy Joey Janela. It was an amazing match and even though Megan put Blake in a tombstone on a door chair setup, nothing was able to stop Blake Christian as he curb stomped her giving her another loss. We saw the return of Violence is Forever as they put their GCW World Tag Team Championships on the line against the Wolf Zaddies, and they were able to retain, officially calling themselves the Forever Tag Team Champions. Last but not least, Mance Warner not only defended his title once, but twice. It was originally supposed to be a Maki death kill versus Broski, Jimmy, and Mance Warner, but Maki was injured and Nick Gage could not be there. So first, Mance Warner defended his title against Rob Shit, and unfortunately, he kind of discarded him like he was nothing. All of a sudden, out of a blue, another opponent approaches as Frankie Kazarian challenged Mance Warner for his title. There was weapons, chairs, doors, blood, and yes, a little bit of bullshit. Frankie Kazarian technically had that match won, but unfortunately, Broski Jimmy helped out a little to help Mance Warner retain his title. The last show of this week was yesterday as they had their first time in Salt Lake City with the show called Save Me. With nine matches on card, this was a terrific way to end an amazing week for GCW. Blake Christian and Marcus Mathers put on an amazing performance that honestly had me at the edge of my seat the entire time. Another five-star match where Blake Christian ended up winning. We got to see teammates Gringo Loco and Jack Cartwheel put on a Luce Libre match for the ages. But in the end, the veteran of the two, Gringo Loco, won. Now this was truly fight of the night for me as bad boy Joey Janela took on SLC native Tombstone Jesus. Honestly, when I first heard about this match, I really didn't know what to expect, but dude, I was so impressed. I was completely blown away by how they put each other through hell. And although the bad boy won, he gave so much respect to the over 50 year old Tombstone Jesus and honestly I hope we get to see him again. And in the main event I gotta mention that Mance Warner defended his GCW World Championship for the sixth time against Manny Lemons and let me just say the Mancer era is strong baby because he won again. Wow what a kick ass past week GCW had but guess what? This week is even more kick-ass because two of the most important nights of the year are happening for GCW as Homecoming Night 1 and 2 commence. On Night 1 we get to see amazing matches like the Maharaja Raj Desi and the Bollywood Boys take on Thrussy. A rivalry started between Raj and Effie as Raj shocked the entire independent wrestling scene as he showed up to GCW so high to attack Effie. We'll be getting a highly anticipated match as we get to see a three-way ladder match for the GCW World Championship where we see the bad boy Joey Janela, the Southern Psycho Mance Warner, and All Heart Blake Christian. Y'all, this is the true test to see who is the true, real world champion. On night two, we get another anticipated match as we get to see the in-ring return of the GCW Deathmatch General Manager, Matt Cardona. 
He'll be teaming up with Brosy Jimmy to take on Nick Gage and Matt Hardy. And this stemmed as both these two stopped the match between these two at Now or Forever in Cleveland. I would give you the full blown match card for both events, but you need to stay tuned to later this week as Cole TV will be putting up a GCW Homecoming predictions video, which I will be a part of, so you definitely don't want to miss that. This concludes all the GCW hype this week for you guys. And I hope if you haven't already, you give GCW a chance after today. Okay, thanks, bye. Back to you guys. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much, Carly, for that report. You did amazing, and we're so excited to have her part of PW60. She it killed, killed it. it. She... Killed it, and some big news just dropped there. We're doing a GCW That's prediction right. show. That's right. Our first, first time ever. ever. Yep, and um, you can look for that later this week here as well on Cold TV, but, I mean, it's a big weekend. Homecoming is going to be a big show, so be on the lookout for that later this week. And as we always say here on Cold TV, man, there is so much going on in the world of pro wrestling and so much going on in the independent world of professional wrestling. So many different indie shows out there. We highly recommend you get out to them. But as always here on PW60, we got our resident expert, one Michael J. Duplessis, who's going to fill us in and tell us about some of the great indie shows, maybe in a town near you. So let's go to Michael with the Indie Report. What up, y'all? It's one Michael with another independent wrestling events report. First off, we have Relentless Pro Wrestling returns to Spokane, Washington with no excuses. September 7th, doors open at 6, bow time is at 7. This will be at the Players and Spectators Event Center. 12828 East Sprague Avenue, Spokane Valley, Washington. Uh, Relentless PNW for all tickets and information uh, on all their social medias. Secondly, we have Pro Wrestling Live Ohio presents In the, Mul in the Multiverse. Uh, Saturday, October 19th. Doors open at 6.30. Bow time is at 7.00. Uh, at the Future Athletics uh, Center, uh, 6772 Kilowatt Circle in Black Lake, Ohio, 43004. Uh, ProWrestlingLive.com for all tickets and information. And lastly, we have Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. Uh, October 19th and 20th at St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. MLPWrestling.com for all tickets and information on that event. Tap, Mr. Krabs! He was number one! Friday, August 23rd at the Owen Valley Sports Complex in Spencer, Indiana. Tickets available now. Get yours by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the screen. All right, and yes, it is the biggest independent show of the year. It is upon us. The Smitty, can you believe it, B-Roll? It is this Friday coming to you from Spencer, Indiana. 
I am so freaking hyped for this. Of course, your boys, Colt TV, we are going to be there at the Owen Valley Sports Complex. And I'm telling you, I don't care how far away you are. Like, if you need to stay at B-Roll or my place, that's fine. We'll shack you up. You can share a bed with Reggie and Cash if you have to. I'm sure they would love to have that. Um, (laughs) But get your butt to Spencer, Indiana this Friday for the Smitty. It is going to be an amazing show. And we're like I say, we're so honored and, and to be a part of this show. It's going to be an amazing show, and I cannot wait for the speed. And if you haven't been enticed enough yet, all I will say, I'm not going to say what, <laughs> but we will be in costume. Let's just put it that way. All right, let's get back into it here. Let's talk about uh, MJF uh, going all over the place, working everywhere, brother. Uh, worked a Rev Pro show. Going up against uh, this young man right here, one Michael Oku, who the rumor has it that he is going to essentially sign with AEW. A lot of people talking about this young man as the best UK wrestler going today. Um, what do you think of this news? I mean, it kind of makes sense. He's buddies, buddies with Osprey, um, fit right in with uh, AEW, I would say. Yeah. Um, so, a couple things. I want to see this. The MJF American flag with the faces on it. Oh, God. Not again. You're muted. Oh, dear God. (laughs) We're so close to being done with this. (laughs) Yeah, we got nothing. You're muted. Okay. We're going to try to continue on here. Um we're going to, yep, before anything crazy happens, maybe we get B-roll back in, but uh, we're not taking the risk. So, because we're close to finishing up the show here this week, and we do apologize for all the technical difficulties this week. Uh, it came out this week that one Dakota Kai uh, was injured, and it looks like she's going to be on the shelf again for a little bit. Are you back, buddy? Because I can't hear you. Uh, yep, we can't hear you. So that's all right. We'll figure something out. Uh, but Dakota Kai on the shelves, it looks like again. Unfortunately, you hate to hear this, man, because she's just getting back from injury and 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 now going to be out for I believe it was eight weeks, is what they said. So uh, hopefully she gets to healing up and gets back in the ring real soon. Also, it was announced this week that the Viper Randy Orton has actually re- um, signed a contract extension with the WWE. Definitely looks like he's going to be finished his career with the WWE, and I would say rightfully so. I mean, I mean, when I think of Randy Orton, I can't see him anywhere else. In all honesty, so uh, kudos and congratulations to to Randy Orton, uh, truly uh, deserving uh, to get that contract extension and get to finish his career out in the WWE. Let's talk about this. The Fanatics Fest took place over the weekend in New York City. And uh, with every other athlete that was there, because this isn't, it wasn't just a WWE thing. This was like all sports. WWE was the only one to have all sellouts across the board with all the talent that was there. So you got like Kevin Durant, you got all these other great athletes. They're not selling out. But by God, the WWE is. And that just goes to show you like just how how red hot the WWE is right now. So a pretty cool statistic, I would say, nonetheless. Uh, also this week, we found out that AEW Wrestle Dream will be taking place Saturday, October 12th, from the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Um, so excited for that. And it's also exciting the fact that it is a Saturday pay-per-view. I'm all for that. So um, that is exciting news to hear AEW's Especially going back to Washington, it's a great our good buddy Michael from there, uh, and he can speak. Washington, the Washington area is a great place for pro wrestling. Now this is interesting because this is, to my knowledge, the first time this has really happened. As AEW World's End at the end of the year is on Saturday, December twenty eighth in Orlando, Florida, and also WWE will be running a show the same day in Orlando, Florida. So. Running the same town the same day. We're going back to the days of the uh, of WWF and Crockett Promotions, baby. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this falls out, like uh, what comes from this. And um, I don't know. It's very, very, uh, it's interesting. Let's just 
leave it at that. Well, it's that time of the show. Let's go to Brian with Brian's random moment of the week. Hey, what's up? It's another great episode of P to the Dove to the Six to the Zero. Harry's outside the house. I would say in the house, but outside the house. Coming in close. Ah. Hat. Oh, yeah, by the way, here. Don't have it on for the moment. That's all right. It's whatever. All right, so as we met last time for Brian's random moment of the week, covering the history of pro wrestling in our What If series, and we talked about one of the most polarizing figures in wrestling history, and that is Hulk Hogan, brother, 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 brother. And uh, what would have happened, or what if, he never left the WWF in 1993? How would that have impacted WCW when he went there in 94? And then eventually, with the uh, formation of the NWO in July of 1996, when he officially turned heel, how that would have went. Now, continuing, as I mentioned last time, with our look at some of the original members, sorry, I get distracted very easily while I'm recording. Uh, looking at the some of the founding members of the NWO in WCW in 1996. Now, I'm gonna do a pair, and that would be Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Now, those that really remember, when I started watching wrestling, WCW in like 1990, 91, remember that Hall and Nash, respectively, as the Diamond Stud and Oz, and Nash as Vinny Vegas as well, those that know, know for sure, um, were in WCW before they went to the WWF to become Razor Ramon and Diesel. Now, let's fast forward. What if, in 1996, Hall and Nash never left the WWF? What if they stayed there? How would their careers have went continuing in the WWF at that time? And what would that have meant for the formation of the NWO in WCW? Would Hogan have still formed it with two other people? And if so, who would they be? There's so many things that you can unwrap with this question. What if Hall and Nash never left the WWF to go to WCW around 1996? Think about it. And let me know in the comments. Ah, uh, interesting. Well, Brian, we love you, buddy. Always ask such great questions. And hey, you know who else we love here on PW60? We love our content creators. And this week, our wrestling content creator of the week, well, it's not your traditional content creator as, um, I don't know if you've all seen this video, but it's just too freaking adorable not to highlight. But our Ruby Ringside creator of the week this week is one Sam uh, Pinoku... God, I can't talk. Ponokowski. I butchered that royally. Ugh, I'm sorry, folks. Anyways, um, the video that we're talking about in question here is uh, his little girl reaction to Jey Uso with the yeet dance. It's It's adorable. It's amazing. It's going viral. And seriously, go give them a follow. Go check them out over on TikTok. And I'm sure they're across other social media platforms. But this week, uh, Sam Ponikowski is our Ruby Ringside content creator of the week. Uh, here, PW60. And finally, our last story this week, as you saw at the beginning of the show, um, we lost another great in the world of professional wrestling this past week as Afa Anoye. The uh, member of the other member of the Wild Samoans did pass away, uh, and of course, about a month ago, um, <coughs> excuse me, we did lose his brother. Uh, so now both the Wild Samoans up in that squared circle up in the sky, uh, watching down. Such a tremendous legacy. Of course, we all know with the Anawai family, um, but uh, you hate to see this. But it's I'm sure the brothers are reunited and are looking down with a big smile on the face on what that Samoan family is doing right now in the world of professional wrestling. So we do apologize immensely about the technical difficulties. Um, hopefully we won't run into that again, but you, hey, it is what it is. And like I say, happy third birthday here to uh, Cold TV. Uh, it's been an amazing ride so far, and we got so much more planned on the horizon. You're going to stay tuned for that. And be on the lookout for a, a special cut of this episode tomorrow. It'll be here on Cold TV. Thank you all so much. We love you all, and we'll see you next time on another episode of Pro Wrestling 60. Everybody have a great week. Bye.